I was 15 at the time and in the capital city of Kansas. Don't even start with the Wizard of Oz jokes. I was hanging around a group of people I regularly hung out with at the time. The day was slow and cloudy, like really dark type cloudy. We actually had a huge storm the night after or some shit like that. But anyways, with it being such a slow day, we really wanted to get fucked up. We were at my friend's house, for the sake of the story and protection of my friends, let's just call him Tyler. Well, anyways, we were at Tyler's house. Tyler, our friend Josh and I, decided we should go get some weed and a little extra hardcore shit on the side. Coke. It was mostly for Tyler, as he was into the more hardcore types of drugs. We hit up our dealer and do the usual, and let him know what we were looking for. Turns out, he hadn't upped his supply recently and we had to go through one of his contacts which was immediately sketchy as fuck, as I only like going through people I know personally. It's really just a matter of not being ratted out or some bullshit like that. We got his contact info, hit him up, and oh boy, lucky us, he had exactly what we were looking for. So we set our deal up and by that point it was super late at night. I honestly just wanted to get high and get the fuck home. We decided that the poorly lit skate park a few blocks from Tyler's place would be a wonderful spot to meet up. We took our time to get there as we had a bad rep around that part of town. To sum up why we had a bad rep, we stole a fuckload of fireworks a few fourths ago and the cops came into the neighborhood and busted all of us. Anyways, back to the story. We eventually get there and we had to wait for the guy to show up which is immediately more sketchy as I like for my dealer to be there at the same time as I am. Eventually, a blacked out vehicle with no lights on rolls up behind the park and a group of people step out of it. We wait in the skate park for them to get up to where we were sitting, which is also the area with the least amount of light. A man stepped up to us first, who must have been the dealer, and he was dressed in dark clothing. In fact, from what we had seen back when they first got out, they all were. Just as we were about to trade off, his group of friends who we obviously weren't paying enough attention to, managed to sneak up behind us and placed objects which we all described as what felt like a gun onto us and told us to empty our pockets. We were being fucking robbed. I knew the whole thing was a sketchy ass thing to do, but we set up the deal anyways. They took Tyler and Josh's phones and wallets which were loaded with info and cash. And now, I was the center of the fucking freak show at the circus. I told them I had nothing in my pockets, which I didn't. I don't take valuables to deals. Only money, and that's if I'm the one carrying it. As they're all surrounding me getting ready to beat the fuck out of me, Tyler attempts to disarm one of their weapons and fails, which results in him being stabbed. They then fled and left us all there. Josh and I had to help Tyler to his house and called 911. We said it was an incident in the kitchen. I found out a few days later that their phones were sold and people started coming to Tyler's house at strange hours. Tyler has since moved and Josh has ended up in prison for a situation he shouldn't have been involved in. I haven't talked to any of them in over three years. Moral of the story, don't go to deals that you don't trust yourself. Or you know, you could just like not go to deals at all, that'd be good. I'm a 17 year old Hispanic female but at the time that this happened I was 14 and this took place in Texas. I had recently gotten out of a mental health hospital and was diagnosed with chronic depression, bulimia and body dysmorphia. The only way I felt loved or appreciated was by having sex with older men and doing drugs. It was summer and I was about to start high school. I was invited to a party with some of my older friends, Vanessa, Callie and Jackie. I knew my mom wasn't going to let me go to a party after I got caught having sex with a 20 year old at my cousin's quinceanera, so I lied and said I was going to spend the night at one of my friend's houses. She let me go, seeing as I hadn't left the house since I got back from the hospital and even let me stay with my friend for two days. I thanked her and went to my room to get my stuff ready. A few hours later, my friend Vanessa picked me up and my mom gave me $45 just in case we went shopping or we wanted to order a pizza or something. As soon as I got in her car, I smelled weed. She smiled at me with low, red eyes and threw me a pack of strawberry swishers and some weed, then told me to roll one for us. I did, and we went to pick up my other friends. After we got Jackie, we went to Callie's house to get dressed and then we were on our way. 
I was pretty high and didn't realize that we had left town and we were going to Dallas. When we got there, I found it odd that it was just me, my three friends, and Jackie's boyfriend, who was 21 and she was 17. I didn't say anything, thinking more people were probably just coming later. At the time, all I had really done in the past was smoke weed and drink. My friends knew that, so they told me I didn't have to do anything else if I wasn't ready. But I wanted so bad to seem cool in front of them and Jackie's boyfriend. Plus, I was getting bored just sitting there drinking while Callie and Vanessa were snorting coke. They told me that they had a dealer that gave them an 8-ball for a pretty cheap price. They called up the guy and said that they can meet up at his place since he was on house arrest. We got into Quan's car, which is Jackie's boyfriend, since he had a van and we could all fit inside of it. We were on our way and Callie was rolling up another blunt. I got higher than I've ever been in my entire life. They told me that this was the strongest strain they ever had, too, and to just relax so nobody would trip out. I was giggling at nothing. My entire body felt like I was vibrating and I felt like we were floating. When we got there, I could barely walk. My legs felt like jello, so Callie helped me walk since she needed help walking, too. We knocked and went inside. I think there were around six guys, all in their mid-twenties. One caught my attention. He looked out of place. He was dressed way better than the other guys and was very attractive. I guess he noticed me too and came up and started talking to me. He asked me what my name was and my age. I told him the truth and his eyes got big. I felt awkward and asked him how old he was. I'm 24, but <laughs> don't worry, I'm not a pedo, he said with a chuckle. I didn't care since I had been with 20 year olds before. I looked over at my friends and they were all laughing and talking to the guy who was on house arrest but I didn't pay attention. The guy asked me if I wanted to sit down on the couch with him. My legs still felt like jello so I nodded and sat down. He sat down next to me and said, I'm Kodak by the way. I smiled and he scooted closer. I guess he noticed that I was tensing up and he said, I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable, I just think you a fine little Spanish girl. I felt myself blush and I said, No, it's okay, I'm not uncomfortable, I'm just really high and I feel like time is going in slow motion. He laughed and I felt stupid for saying that. Do you want to go to my room and lay down for a sec? I said sure, not wanting to make a fool out of myself in front of the other guys there. I told my friends I'll be back and they said okay and kept talking and laughing. I was holding on to the wall and he said, Don't worry baby girl, I got you and grabbed me by the waist and took me to his room. I sat on his bed and he sat next to me. I could tell he wanted to kiss me by how close he was to my face and his hand rubbing on my thigh. I really wasn't in the mood for more than kissing so I just kissed him hoping he would be satisfied with that and let me rest. He stood up and I thought that was it. My eyes were very low so I didn't notice him taking off his shirt until I heard his belt being undone. I looked up at him and he smiled at me. I couldn't understand what was going on. I wanted to say no, but I couldn't. He took off my pants and got on top of me. He kissed me and was touching me. As soon as he tried unbuttoning my jeans, I screamed. He put his hand over my mouth and my friends were too busy laughing in the living room so nobody heard me. He told me to shut up or he was going to shoot my brains out. I bit his hand and he hit the side of my head with something hard. This is where I blacked out for a few minutes, or seconds, I couldn't tell. I woke up only to see him putting on a condom and being almost completely naked. He didn't know I was conscious again and I got up and tried to run but my underwear was still around my ankles. He saw me get up and tried to run after me but he was looking for something in the covers. I managed to pull up my underwear and grab my jeans and ran out screaming. My friends were in shock and the guy who was on house arrest was too. They all paused to look at me and I told them he tried to rape me. He came out of his room, stumbling over my shoes, wearing only black gym shorts and socks. That's when we all ran for the door and went outside. Quan grabbed his keys out of his pocket and we all jumped in. Callie was the last one to get in and as soon as she closed the door we heard two gunshots and bolted out of there. I was crying hysterically and they were trying to calm me down. We drove fast and when we were at a stoplight, something hit us from the back. It was Kodak and his friends with guns out of their black car. 
They had been following us without their headlights on. I screamed at Quan to hurry and he did. We swerved and ended up losing them on a busy street. Let's just go back to my house and you girls can go home. I'll switch cars and follow behind you guys just in case, said Quan. I didn't want to argue, I just wanted to go back to Vanessa's house and sleep everything off. We got to his house and Callie, Jackie, and I went into Vanessa's car while he switched cars into an old beat up black Acura. Quan followed us home and, thankfully, the other guys didn't follow us. We took the long way back to Arlington and took a lot of turns just in case. Quan stayed with us since it was around 2am and he was tired. We got into Vanessa's house and, being the hippie she is, she made some lavender and chamomile tea. We went to Vanessa's room upstairs so that we wouldn't wake up her parents and they asked me what happened. I told them everything and then Quan said, I know why they followed us. We all looked at him as he pulled out what looked like an ounce of cocaine from his hoodie. He had apparently slipped it in his pocket while they all turned around to look at me when I came out screaming. You dumbass, we could have gotten killed, said Jackie. He had just stolen a ton of money's worth of cocaine. That's why they went after us. We got calls and threats for weeks because of that. It eventually stopped when Jackie called and left an anonymous tip to the police and they got arrested. To this day, I haven't told my parents what happened. I still have nightmares about that night. This story took place many years ago. My brother used to be a big time drug dealer. If he didn't sell what you wanted, he knew someone who could get you what you wanted. He had a contact in Mexico who said he could hook him up with a well-known former Sitzer Veronek member out of Arizona. He was supposed to be in the secret witness program, but was no longer a part of it. My brother called the number given to him and the man on the phone requested a very large amount of ecstasy pills. My brother had to make a call, but was sure he could get it for him. After a few more phone calls, my brother had secured the deal. He would make a set large amount of money in the process as well. Two days later, the son and a friend of the former gang member flew in and my brother met up with them. As they're driving to the Connects house, they informed my brother that there was a change in plan. They tell my brother that they have no intention of paying for the pills and my brother is going to help them, or else. They then explain the plan to my brother. They arrived at the house and found the Connect along with his grandma there. The son pulled out a gun and told the Connect to have a seat next to his grandma. They told my brother to tie them both up. He did, but he gave a look to the Connect to let him know that he wasn't doing this willingly. When he tied them up, he made sure to tie the Connect up real good, but not the grandma. He whispered to her that she was going to be okay, but to sit still. The son told the Connect to tell him where the ex was. He told the son to go fuck himself. The son laughed and asked again. Again, he told the son to go fuck himself and laughed. The son was not happy with this, so he ordered my brother to hit him. My brother knew he had to, so he hit him. Hard. He busted the guy's nose and blood sprayed everywhere. My brother felt bad, but knew that it had to be real or else he'd suffer the same fate. The son asked the connect one more time, where's the ex? He told him to go suck his friend's dick. This time, the son pulled a gun out, told my brother to shoot him, and handed him the gun. My brother told the son, Look, if we kill him, we'll never find the pills. The son said, We won't be killing him. You will. And if you don't, we'll kill you. Do you understand? What's it gonna be? Kill or be killed? Just then, the grandma saw her chance and hauled ass out of the front door. They told my brother to go grab her. He went after her but ensured that she kept ahead of him. As soon as she was far enough out and screaming for help and my brother saw that she was going to be okay, he ran to his car and got out of there and didn't look back. He came home, packed a bag, told us what had happened and then left town. I had always stayed out of his business. I absolutely hated what he did. And now something serious had happened and I was sure it would come to our house. I became paranoid. Every car I heard outside became their car coming to kill us. I knew who these people were and killing us would be nothing to them. After about a week of nothing but paranoid sightings, my brother came home. 
The first night he was home, we were all mostly relaxed. I say mostly because after all of this, I was never relaxed. At about midnight, we all went to bed. I finally fell asleep after about an hour. I hadn't been asleep very long when I was jarred awake by a loud crash and then yelling. I ran into the living room only to see fire. My mom and I got it put out. That's when we realized that it appeared someone threw a Molotov cocktail at our big living room window. I started to call 911, but my brother made me hang up. He said that I couldn't call. That's when I knew I couldn't live here anymore. Our lives would always be in danger. I moved out a week later. My brother was arrested for cells shortly thereafter and, to be honest, I felt relieved. It sounds stupid, but in my mind he was safer in prison. However, three months after starting his sentence, said gang member was arrested for a large ecstasy ring. I was scared that they would end up in the same prison, but thank God that they didn't. My brother has been out of the drug dealing business since his release many years ago. I still look over my shoulder, worried that one day they'll get even. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to mention a few things before the video ends. In the near future, when I hit 400,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a Q&A live stream. Due to the chat being filled with thousands of people during the last live stream, I'm most likely going to gather the questions via a hashtag on Twitter. So please make sure you're following me on that and I'll also link it in the description. I was also going to let you guys know that I plan on doing certain video topics soon ones that haven't really been covered much. These topics include war stories, stories of people being saved by animals, stories in the perspective of the stalker, Pokemon Go stories, alien stories, weird things like that. So I ask that you please send in any stories that you might have that relate to those things. The email to send them to is corpsehusbandstories at gmail.com and it will also be in the description. Make sure you make the subject of the email what kind of story it is so I can organize things better. Any pictures or proof relating to the story that you send me is highly appreciated and will remain anonymous unless specified. If I don't receive enough stories on the topics I just listed or any that I can verify as legitimate, I will probably just pull the next video on Twitter or something. Also, I'm always looking for more thumbnail artists. So, if you think you can do art for the thumbnails of my videos, please email me saying so along with some of your previous work so I can get an idea of your art style. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the video and once again I hope you enjoyed it. Merch and everything else in the description. Stay safe and have an awesome day.